And House Speaker Paul Ryan is sounding the alarm, calling on Republican congressmen to do whatever it takes to protect their seats, even if it means denouncing the Republican nominee. Democrats would need to net 30 seats to gain control of the House. As of now, a little less than 20 races are currently considered vulnerable. But Speaker Ryan's concerns give legitimacy to the possibility that the House, along with certainly the Senate, are in play. David Avella, chairman of GOPAC, which works to protect Republican majorities in state legislatures and grooms local leaders for congressional roles, joins us now. Call it strategy, call it brinksmanship, call it genuine worry. You do get the feeling that Paul Ryan was telegraphing something by those comments. You think he should be worried or are you worried? Republicans are going to hold the House. We are not turning the gavel over to Nancy Pelosi. Uh, look, the one constant we've had in this election is voters are not looking for a sign-off from their elected leaders of who to vote for in this election. And the candidates who are going to win are going to be the ones who have done their homework, who are talking about issues that voters care about, and have not waited until this last month to start campaigning. Look, the best example is Rob Portman in the state of Ohio. Irregardless of what happens at the top of the ticket, Rob Portman is going to win. And that's what every member of Congress should, be, should have done to get themselves right now to this point. Well, there, there's sort of a certain irony in Ohio that it's normally the top of the ticket that pulls along the rest. Here you've got Rob Portman and his get out the vote operation, his data operation, that may actually be the ones pulling Donald Trump along. GOPAC is different, though, than a lot of PACs in the sense that not only do you give money and give support, but you all also do a huge amount of training, of consulting, those kinds of things to the state legislature candidates. People like Mike Pence came up through your organization, Marco Rubio, among others. What are you counseling them, young state legislatures who are calling saying, what do I do about Donald Trump? You need to be focused on your race. Look, at the end of the day, uh, state legislators aren't going to do anything for or against the, nas the, legislative or the national legislative agenda. They're going to focus on their state legislative agenda. And they need to be connecting with voters uh, on issues that they care about, which is still creating jobs and making sure voters are kept uh, safe in their neighborhoods. Like it or not, though, every Republican from fellow former presidential candidates all the way down are being asked day in and day out to answer for whatever Donald Trump is tweeting about, saying on television, scandal that's come out about him. What's the advice? How do you, how do you advise them to pivot? You need to stay focused on your race because that's what voters are going to make the decision about. They're going to have a choice between the Republican nominee and the Democratic nominee. And these candidates, whether they are congressional candidates or state legislators, of candidates need to be making sure voters know what they're going to do when they're put in office. You made an interesting point earlier when you said that for the first time, really, the idea of endorsements has meant absolutely nothing in this race. And we've seen that play out all the way from the primaries through now. How does that shift grassroots campaigning going forward? How does that shift the dynamics of House races and Senate races going forward? We need to make sure that every Republican turns out and, and votes for as many Republicans on the ballot as possible. And maybe, and for many Americans, that's going to be the presidential race. In other, in other races, it's going to be because their friend or their neighbor is running for a state legislative office and they're going to vote to help out their friend. You put all those people out, it, it's a united effect and it elects a lot of Republicans. You guys have been extraordinarily successful in flipping state legislatures. They were looking at the balance of power in the House. Some could argue that flipping state legislatures is equally important because you've got 50 of them. Are any of them vulnerable right now that they could flip? Oh, sure. There's, look, we have 69 of 99 state legislative chambers, uh, overwhelming majority of them. But we still have the chance to pick up the Kentucky State House. We have a chance to pick up the Washington State House. I mean, in a presidential year, you wouldn't think a state like Washington would go Republican at the state level. We have a great chance there. We have a chance to pick up the, the Colorado State House. If you're looking at where we need to defend, we need to make sure we hold our majorities in the North Carolina House, in New Mexico, in Nevada, in Arizona. So, you know, it's going to be an exciting night on election night. Well, you just, you just mentioned a couple of key swing states, North Carolina, Arizona, Nevada. All right. Uh, exactly. And uh, hence why it's going to be a fun night. Well, it, it always is. Dave Avella, appreciate you being here, sir. Thank you. Thanks so much.